so yeah i have my view open on the left and my controller open on the right and now watch this this is really interesting i can i can keep the control key pressed on my keyboard and click and drag from my view to my controller and this is saying that okay what name do you want to give this user element which is basically a variable name right like how you would have int x or float pi or whatever and right. i will call this username and this is my style of programming i like to put the type of the object in the name of the object itself itself so i'll call this username text field nice okay yep. just because you know when you have like 200 300 lines of code um, you want to immediately know what the type of an object is well it's right here in the name yep yeah right so we'll follow so what you see over here is xcode has connected this variable called username to this user element over here let's do the same for the others oops wrong button i'll call the gre text field I'll call this the TOEFL text field. I'll call this the GPA text field. And what do we do for the button? A button. Right. So when a button is clicked, we want something to happen, right? we want the code to perform some action for us mm -hmm. so to do the same thing basically we drag from the button into the code and you see this little black uh, uh, box that has appeared yeah. it's yeah. in action outlet or outlet collection well right. okay we need to insert an action so it, you see it's already saying action over here and i will say button click oops and what are the different types of connections available is it like hover and things like that yes different user elements have uh, different kind of connections that you can set up got it uh, yeah there's swipe and uh, uh, long press and things like that so this is just a simple tap down uh, action that we want right so what we did over here is we have connected all these user interface elements to either variables in the code or to a function in the code right and now we can talk to these elements directly from code yeah in fact before i proceed any further let's do a simple thing let's just put a print statement in the action for the button and you should say ud squad <laughs> sorry okay yeah let's say Perfect. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, when I run it, the old man needs to yeah. get his gears running again. If they see the top bar, that's where the compiling. Yep. Yeah. yeah. You see, I will click submit, and it's telling me it's printing this to the console. And keep clicking right. submit, submit. And people need to remember why it did not show is because there is no element where we are displaying that on the screen. That's why it's displaying on this console. Right. It, and actually, we should even uh, set up something to display it on the screen itself. That is right. So now that brings us to yeah, when we have that list, we need to display it. So probably like a label or text something. Exactly. So what we need is a label. And I'll take this label. I'll add it right here. Then, and we need to talk to this label from code, right? Yeah. So we need a variable for this. So we do the same thing, and we'll call this the result label. Okay, and let's modify our code a little bit. We can, on the button click, we can say result label dot text equals, 
And let's get rid of print statement. Nice. Okay. So now, now when you click on it, it should display on the label, and label will be blank on by default, right? No, the label will actually show the text label. You have to set it blank by default. Okay. Got it. Okay. So well, it's good to test, and it'll change the label when you click it, right? Yep. Yeah. Nice. Clicking again and again is basically just going to execute this line of code, and you're just going to see that. Yep. Yeah. You can set up like you know things like you've already submitted on the like when when it happens, but that's more complicated. <laughs> yeah, and it's not complicated. It's just logic that you have to build. Right. I mean, complicated as in not something we can show it in and you know perform validation and all those things in this yeah. twenty minutes video. Already we are at twenty minutes. <laughs> yeah, and we have we have already made a mistake. I mean, not a mistake, but we have not thought case in this app already and uh, let's let's uh, see if users can find out what the corner case and let them post it in your comments right yeah yeah and and this is exactly what is problem solving like this is a problem and we are trying to solve a problem uh, you know trying to solve that problem so yeah let's let's uh, go and get now uh, store the results from the textbooks okay right. yeah so we need to store the name we need to store the GRE TOEFL and GPA scores, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and let's create variables for them. So let's say name. It is a string. Actually, we don't even need to do that. We can just assign it to first start off with an empty string. Now, this is not good. You know, like naming your variable, just name GRE TOEFL. Uh, let's say name string. Oops. Why? Why is it not good? This is just my personal opinion because if I come back to my code after two weeks, first of all, I have goldfish memory. When I read my code after two weeks, I will ask myself, what the hell was I thinking back then? Yeah. Right? So yeah. if I if I do this and when my code is really big, I can easily see okay, okay, name is actually a string. Now in the case of GRE, if I just have it like this, this is confusion. Mm -hmm. Does GRE represent an integer or a float representing the user's score? Or uh, is it a string? You're not going to know until you scroll to the top of the file to see what was the data type you declared it to be. Yeah. Yeah. And why why are you doing GRE as a string and not integer? Okay. Good question. Because uh, this is very good. Now let's introduce the viewers to documentation and how important it is to read documentation. Yeah. And I'm I'm gonna apologize over here real quick because uh, I told Mohit that if this is gonna be only 20, 30 minutes. I, I know we want to provide the value, and I hope uh, if you're watching still, it provides this value and this. That's why uh, I'm I'm kind of derailing this a little bit and letting Mohit you know explain a little bit in detail because this is what industries and companies look for documentation and commenting your code and why it is important. So yeah. Um, so let's let's go more. It's uh, one thing. So I, I had an intern once and uh, I was uh, mentoring him and uh, I would notice his first go to website. Now I have nothing against this website. His first go to website was Stack Overflow. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> the problem with Stack Overflow is it gives you the answer, but it doesn't explain why. Mm. And for me, it's more important to know why than how. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. Uh, and I, I always push people to try to read the documentation first. So, uh, let's go here. Oh. Okay. Uh, so I know all these Xcode shortcuts to open up documentation quickly, and I will open up the documentation here. So. On this page, Apple is describing everything you can do with a text field. 
Hmm. Why is it called UI text field and not text field? Because this is Apple's way of telling you what type of element it is. UI stands for user interface element. And you see, I'm already doing something similar by putting things like the type in the name of my variable, like label, string. It's mm -hmm. making your life easy. So when I scroll down, I can keep going. They have all the information you need for a text field over here. And all the way down here, you see this property text? Yeah. It's telling me that the text you get from a text field is a string. Right. So, so even if, as, if yeah. you enter the number 3.14, I will be getting that 3.14 as a string, not right. as a float. I will have to so manually put it to a float. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's awesome. Okay. Okay. So that is why uh, for now I am storing them as strings, but if you like, we can actually let's convert them. Okay. Okay, now I'm calling them GRE score, TOEFL score. So I know that this is actually going to be a number. Right. And let's make it float. You see in Swift, you don't have to give the type, just assign it to an initial value. Oh, I didn't know that. That That's what I was like, where did you write that it's an integer or not? <laughs> no, you just give it an initial value and it will set the type for you. So if I keep it safe. So oh, cool. <laughs> you see now the type of GRE score is in. Oh, wow. That is awesome. Make yeah. it 0, 0.0, it's a double. Yeah, okay. All right. And then we need one more for uh, GPA. That will be float again. Okay. Yep. All right. Now, what happens when the button is clicked? We need to put the information in these variables. So when the button is clicked, I will say, well, uh, name string equals. I already forgot what it was called. It was called the well, user text field. Yeah. Username text field dot text. And it's going to yell at me. So I'll put this exclamation point, which is just saying ignore any errors for now. Uh, GRE score equals. Now I need to convert the string that I'm getting into a double. So will be GRE text field dot text and this exclamation. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need, okay, why are you yelling at me? This is what will happen when you start coding. You this will, and it's good that it's throwing, uh, not a, at compiling, it's throwing before. Well, actually, you know, the beauty of Swift is this code is being compiled at while oh, you're typing. As soon as you type it, it compiles, okay. Yeah, so uh, it's telling me this is actually a compiling error and it's even telling me how I can fix it. And I will just follow this instruction. I can click on fix and it will fix it for me. <laughs> it's so, wow, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, generally, in my day-to-day uh, -day development, I would not put these exclamation marks over here, but yeah. we're on a time limit. Sure. So, right, 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 yeah. yeah. In, I would not do this in production code. Putting exclamation marks is a very risky operation in Swift. Yeah, yeah. And I can say TOEFL score is my TOEFL text field text and GPA score GPA text field dot text with the exclamations yeah so now so Mohit if you have to uh, quickly explain what what just did you do yeah so what we did was I showed you in the documentation that from a text field, the text property 
is always a string. You can even see that here. It's a string. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to convert the string to a number because that's how we are storing these elements as numbers. So to convert that, we call the constructor of the double data type. So this over here is saying, we're calling the constructor of the double data type and passing the string as parameter. And this should convert the string to a double for us. Yeah. Uh, yep. And basically all of this variables, name, string, GRE. So as soon as the button is clicked, we are saving this into these variables. Right. And then and then we can just simply without any uh, formulas or anything, we can just display that here's what you type. But what we're going to do is we're going to kind of put an if condition that, hey, based on this score, you're going to get this list. Um, you're going to get admit on this. So we're going to do if statement, which is what uh, Mohit is doing. Yeah. So what do you want? What What is your business logic? Uh, you're, you're the product owner. What do you right. do? At <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So... I think that's a good point. So here's, here's the uh, business logic, where, what he said, and this is where how it works in real world. Uh, software developers, they don't, they don't care. They don't care about the requirements. Business analyst will get to product owner, and product owner is like, if the condition is that GRE is 300 uh, or below, 300 or below, and... So let's do that. GR is for 300, less than equal to 300. And TOEFL, uh, yeah, and uh, TOEFL less than uh, 80. Then I want them to give the list as Chico State that they will get in Chico State. Not print, right? Like oh, you're sorry. Saying. We want to put it to the label. label. Yeah. Result label will be that uh, I and I want them to say like even greet that hey uh, uh, hey whatever that name is uh, is eligible for Chico State perfect yeah. so that's how so product owner doesn't care how developer is going to do product owner is going to tell this is what I want uh, that when somebody types this I want this. Uh, and then business analysts will take this requirement and break it down into a smaller task, and then they will take it to a uh, software developer. Again, this depends on uh, companies to companies. In my company, this is how it happens. My company, they don't use business analysts. They use UX designers to do the functional requirement. But anyway, yeah. Uh, but we also want to add a GPA. So let's add another condition. I mean, add the condition and GPA. Uh, 2.75 and below. Less than okay, yeah. So I was just going to be like, oh, I don't understand what you product owners are talking. Be more specific. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, Let's... your GPA score should be below what? 2.75. Okay, less than equal to or less than? What do you want? Yeah, less than equal to. Yep, less than. Either that or... Uh... So that's the minimum if they have, actually we, we, what we should do is we should reverse it uh, because I, you know, this is the problem I give to developer. <laughs> we should say, if you get a above 290 uh, and if you get above 80 and if you get above 272.75 GPA, then you will get in uh, Chico state. That's what I want. So above 290. Yeah. So like that. Yep. TOEFL score should be above what? 80? 80. Yep. Yeah. Uh -huh. And GPA score should be? Above 2.75. Okay. Yeah. Now, now there is a bug, but let's, let's, uh, let's, you know, go for this one. And uh, I think we got everything. Yeah. So what they basically we created an app saying that uh, that if someone types it uh, we're just going to give one university if this is the case then display this uh, if that's not the case then what will happen else uh, uh, 
yeah result text uh, work on your uh, uh, result dot text um, i think we should say uh, you need to contact udj <laughs> <laughs> And that's this is just for fun, but obviously this is not a real app. But uh, let's see. Yep. Okay. Are you ready to go take it for a spin? Yes. Now let's do the sprint review. <laughs> All right. Let's open it. And let's enter a name. Why do I always do that? GRE is five for two ninety five, TOEFL eighty one, and GPA three and submit. Nice. See that's that means that he is eligible for Chico State. Now let's do the if condition where you got less than two ninety, or you got two ninety. Actually, let's do that. <laughs> two ninety. Anything else you want to change? No, I think let's keep all of them same. Okay. You need to contact. And and the reason is we didn't add less, I mean, it's, we didn't add equal to. So it says that uh, the condition, if you see on the right hand side, it says GR score great. It has to be greater than 290. Otherwise, you won't get it. If I would have said, told him that if they got 290, then he's still eligible, then he would have got it. So yeah, that. This is it. Uh, this is this is the app we can create, and and I would highly recommend you to start working on something like this, right? <laughs> and I maybe this is a starting point for our startup app. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, let me show you how I can crash the app. Okay. Boom. Nah. Gosh, why? <laughs> because you added text and uh, uh, a variable uh, like a character, and and it's not able to convert that into float. Exactly. So three x cannot be converted to a double, so it's going to crash. And right. that's that's a good point where uh, a unit testing comes in, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that will be a separate thing where we will talk about unit <laughs> testing. We, you know, uh, I know this is we've already crashed like 45, 50 minutes of talking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but again, uh, this is so awesome. And we just wanted to, you know, my whole goal and purpose was to show you like 20 minutes we spent in this and we have a, like a starting point to develop an app. Obviously, you know, you can put, you can make the app look fancier. You can put like a lot more animation to it. Uh, uh, you can, you know, now if you are into machine learning and AI and data science and all of those things, those people, they we can use the algorithms to kind of, based on how many people put the inputs, we can, you know, uh, we don't even have to specify hard coded uh, the requirements. Uh, basically right now, what I've done is like, I have put in requirement that if they get this miss, this miss, this, then they will do, uh, then they will be eligible. But later on, if we have hundreds of results, then uh, we can use AI to just based on a pattern that if people are getting this much score range, then they they will be eligible because this is based on the fact and this is based on the uh, you know uh, results we have. Do you want to add anything, Mohit? Um. Uh... Yeah, so as far as uh, this is concerned, there's so much more you can do with this application. You can connect it to a backend web service where which is going to run your machine learning model. And so when submit button is clicked, it will actually talk to this web service where the model will run and return the actual information which you can then display in this label. So, and how to talk to a web service? Uh, there's inbuilt classes available for you in iOS. You don't have to build it from scratch. There's yeah. uh, when you work with these sophisticated frameworks, and not only iOS, Android, or uh, whatever you're working with. There's always APIs. That's what they're called. There's always APIs available to do everything you need to do. Right. Right. 
and we can even you know uh, put this into uh, facebook apis what is what you are saying uh, so that people can we can just you know grab data from facebook and things like that but yeah that's more uh, technical and more involved uh, this is this is quick demo of uh, uh, our app and you know how you can get started with this uh, now the million dollar question mohit uh, this is awesome i learned this i can create this you, you know udj demo app uh, uh, but how do i you know learn more like where do i you know start learning how did you learn all of this uh, like i want i want people because this is something we just gave them a starting point i want people to go somewhere after this and start learning this if they are into this so i actually started learning this way back in 2010 when uh, the whole iphone thing was new and back then in fact back then there was no swift it was objective c and if you ever see the syntax of objective c it has the weirdest syntax ever that you you've seen um so i basically learned from whatever was available on the internet um, at that time but now over time there's so many bloggers there's so many different uh, tutorials and resources available online that there's no way you can complain that i don't know how to do something or it's just not possible to do something because somebody or the other has already thought of some idea that you have in your mind and has implemented a piece of it at least so you can take it from them and start building on top of that so yeah. i want to share some resources where you can go to today and start learning uh, let me open up the browser maybe so more you can you can quickly uh, have like a note note file or text file and then just uh, copy paste these links because i'll either ask you uh, or uh, i'll send so them I, i'll send yeah. them to you yeah okay. so the first website is uh, uh, this website swift.org this website is an official apple website and uh, to build ios apps you need to know the language first and this is a very very good resource to uh, for learning the language uh, they also have a book available which you can download for free um let me see where i think it's in the documentation section yeah download the epub uh, i i will say that this book that you download from here is the bible of swift it has everything you need to know about the language so i would recommend definitely to to start over here and the next thing is this link on apple's website uh, which is uh, the title of this page is start developing ios apps it has a step by step tutorial on how to create this uh, food rating application so you can display a list of uh, different food items show an image and put this uh, rating uh, user interface over here so you can yeah. follow along yeah yeah uh, these are these are some of the official um, resources there's one again the next two links that i'm going to show i don't endorse anybody i'm not getting paid to talk yeah, about i'm not getting paid this is not a promotion so uh, feel free to take this uh, as a real advice <laughs> not yeah. a paid, paid advice it's this website uh, created by this one guy called paul hudson uh it's called hacking with swift and he puts up these uh, uh programs like 100 days of swift or uh, he has uh swift uh swift example codes or swift ui by example so he has these uh, packages or uh, that he's created and they're available for free and you can follow these tutorials and start building applications for yourself Wow, I didn't realize that this guy even teaches you how to make apps for Mac and the watch. That's nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And yeah, this guy has some good tutorials. Sometimes when I'm stuck, I will come to his website and see how he's solving problems. And if you complain that you don't have a Mac, there is a solution. You can rent a Mac servers online. which have xcode already installed on them there's this is one of the websites there's many more but i have used this website in the past it's called mac 
in cloud.com and i think 20 dollars which would be around 1400 1500 rupees a month with uh, today's exchange exchange rate uh, i think this should be pretty decent and it already comes with uh, x code installed on it so right. this is this is literally a mac computer running on somewhere on the internet and you just do a screen sharing session with this computer and you can do everything nice yeah cool so yeah, yeah i'll give you all these links and you can put them uh, attach it to your video description yeah i will do that that's awesome yeah let's uh, switch to yeah uh, okay no this is this is so so valuable i hope uh, people are still watching and i hope they are learning from this uh, i learned I learned it, <laughs> so I know I, I can, I'm going to start making my app now. <laughs> I have MacBook. <laughs> Honestly, it, that's what it is. You start with the skeleton that we just built today, and then you keep iterating and building on top of that. That's how yeah. it's built. Right, right. Yeah, let me know in the comment section if you would be interested in making something like this. Uh, we, you know, we can we can do something together. Uh, I mean, if you're interested. Also, I know Mohit will be getting a lot of uh, LinkedIn requests and uh, Instagram messages. Bro, teach me this, this. Uh, so, Mohit, if you do get, uh, we will bring, send us uh, more suggestions. This was one of the suggestions from you guys. So, send more suggestions what, what we should teach you. Uh, Mohit is very, very talented. <laughs> this is one of the skills he has, but he has many more skills. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, what what's the one tip would you give someone who's who's scared and you know wanting to learn iOS but don't know and you know kind of lost and confused? Uh, if you are scared, just watch someone else do it. If you go on YouTube and search for this video, you can watch me do it, or you can. There's so many other people who um, who show you how to build apps. Just watch them do it. You know. Instead of uh, uh, binging on money heist, uh, <laughs> just go ping somebody else in programming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that you said it right. I you know I felt it because <laughs> I know a lot of times I make videos and people don't watch it and then they watch uh, some other videos which are like which has hundred thousand views and I'm like, what the heck? We put in so much value in this video and nobody's watching it. <laughs> but yeah. That's awesome, man. I, I really appreciate your time, Mohit, again. Uh, thank you for doing this. Uh, you know how we end the video, right? Uh, keep smiling and keep hustling. So you want to do that again for me? Yeah. All right. Keep smiling. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. Okay. I, have to say, I have to say until our next one, and then you have to say that. Okay. All right. Until our next one. Keep smiling and keep hustling. <laughs>